now that we've gone over the entire Bloomboro set, talking about the amazing cards in it and giving my thoughts and opinions on it, I thought I'd decide to go on to the deck, starting off with the Animated Army. This is a Gruul deck with an adorable raccoon in it, filled with cards that haven't really seen much play in this type of way Gruul usually works. So if you're interested in this or just want to see if you want to buy it or not, or the contents of the deck, or again my thoughts and opinions on it in this video i will be going through all of that plus a little bit more but before i go any further you know what i usually do by now if you watch any of my videos and if you have thank you we will have a word from our sponsor the sponsor of this video is me i have started an etsy page where i'm going to try and be selling clothes that i've design thought would be funny thought would be cool thought would be amazing on people's bodies so i literally spent maybe a month or two looking at different resources and stuff to come up with the nicest clothes i could possibly find with the coolest designs that i have done myself with stuff like play mats hoodies t-shirts i'm going to try and do phone cases they're harder than i thought but i do think that it is a really good thing to actually put into so if you would like to help me out or help the channel out please go onto my Etsy it will be linked down below and you'll be able to find very nice clothing and also be supporting the channel so links down below and also if there's any other designs I will be putting on any of my social media so please follow me there as well. So if you've never seen these type of videos, I go over the commander, the sub commander, the context of the deck itself. Then I give my thoughts and opinions on it, talking about some of the cards in it, and then showing off probably the best cards in each single section. So this is one of them type of videos. I will be going over all four decks in the next coming weeks, two weeks usually, and then do an overall video of what all of them put together. So again, if you're just interested in any of the decks, please wait, that video will be soon. Or if you just wanna wait and watch them all, that would also be good. But if you're super cool and handsome, you will watch all of them. But now let's go on to the video itself, starting off with the commander of the deck and the commander being Bellow Bard of the Brumble. For one red and a green, you get a legendary creature, Raccoon Bard, that is a mythic. During your turn, each non-equipment artifact and non-or enchantment you control with mana value 4 or greater is a 4-4 elemental creature in addition to its other types and has indestructible haste and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. It is also a 3-3. So one, this I've never seen a Gruul Commander do very, very well and I do actually really like it. Two, you get a full art if you buy the deck and this full art is absolutely adorable. I absolutely love the art on the card. You get a 3-3-4-3 three, three, three mana, which is okay, but the main part of this card is its ability. You are able to pretty much get a large amount of creatures that whenever they do damage you get to draw a card they're also very difficult to kill because of the indestructible and then plus it also has haste so they get to attack straight away this deck should be filled with the type of cards you need i really do think this is quite a good and powerful commander overall and i really like the unique ability of it but with every commander there is a sub commander and the sub commander of this deck is Wild Seer Scourge and Maw for three red and a green. You get a legendary creature elemental wolf that is a mythic. It has trample. Enchantment spells you cast from your hand have cascade and it is a 6-6. Six, six. Five mana for sixes with trample is really really good. You're able to power this up. This I personally think would be quite a decent kind of Voltron deck. You literally play cards from your hand, like enchantment auras and stuff like that. Because of that, because you cast them from your hand, you get to cascade into things, uh, put them all onto this wolf, and then be able to plow through and get rid of your opponents. I do think it is worth it because it has trample, and I do think it's worth it because it is five mana for a six six, which again is very powerful. Then we have the actual like ability itself, playing enchantments is really, really good. The amount of enchantments, plus you're able to, they don't have to be enchantment auras, they can just be normal enchantments. So you're able to have a variation of amazing cards. Plus Cascade, in my opinion, is the, or one of the most powerful keywords in Magic the Gathering. Now onto Planeswalkers. 
I love when Planeswalkers are in a deck and I really liked what they did with this. They have kind of done a what if scenario where if a Planeswalker goes into this plane because they're human, they get turned into a animal. But the other good thing is they're also picking Planeswalkers that are not here anymore or that haven't been seen in a while. So I really like that ability of what if this person was still around and they got a Planeswalker card. And again, for people that want them Planeswalker card, it's really good to be able to go here, even though they're forgotten or not around anymore, here is an alt app version for people that love that Planeswalker. In this deck, you get Domri and Arch of Bolas. I did really think that in the story, they did Domri wrong, and it hasn't been really a good, in my opinion, good Grull Planeswalker. Again, still think he wasn't the best, but it mainly seems just to be the abilities and not the Planeswalker. If you have a red green Planeswalker that you absolutely love, let me know and why. So let's go on to the creatures of this deck. In this deck, there is a total of 22 creatures, which for an, both commanders, mainly focusing on artifacts and enchantments is a very weird in my personal opinion that you do get 22. I thought it would have been somewhere between 18 and 20, but again, I don't make these decks. But you get good creatures, just like Atali Primal Storm, Prosperous Bandit, Pyro's Wipe Hawk, Lotus Cobra, Evercoat Ursing, Brightcap Badger, Tail Tracker Scout, Golter Primal Hunger, Coma of the East Tree, Groth Armor All Devouring, Rampage and Behemoth, Liana War Loam Speaker, Tender Shoot Dryad, Gorklaw Terror of Quell Silma. My problem with this section is there is a lot of cards that are really good and really powerful, like the Elder Dinosaurs and stuff like that. However, it's one of those things with all the new cards and all the new sets, I thought they might be able to be able to reprint some of the more expensive cards that are really good in red and green, or be able to give us somewhat powerful creatures that are the same. Like for example, Atali in this is very, very good. But there is also an Atali in them colors. Why did we not get that one? That one would have been better. It seems to be that they're putting in the older variations of cards or cards that are in a lot of the decks or a lot of scene. However, because people have multiple copies of the card, I'm like putting more newer ones that people would be more excited to get. Now we're going on to the enchantments of the deck. When it comes to the enchantments, there's 13 in total, which does seem right because of the two commanders. But in this deck, you get Alchemist's Talent, Berserker's Onslaughter, Outpost Siege, Brain of Riches, Sunbird's Invocation, Gutterous Violent, Worn Storm Surge, Thickest of the Thicket, Unnatural Growth, Greater Good, Primeval Bounty, and Path of Discovery. These, in my personal opinion, a good chunk of them just seem generic enchantment good stuff in the colours. I always love Unnatural Growth. It's one of my favourite enchantment cards and I always try and put that in a deck that is red and green or just green. I do think this is very powerful and I do like the enchantments they put in, but it just seems to be something a little bit missing, in my opinion. So if there's any enchantments you think they should have put in, let me know in the comments down below. Now let's go on to spells. In this deck there is 12 in total, but you get some like Chaos Warp, Star Storm, Blasphemous Act, and Decimate. For 12 cards, only getting a handful of rares is very weird. I did think when I seen this card and the two commanders that straight away that I thought lands and spells were gonna be the weak point. Blasphemous Act has been pretty much in every set for the last like year now or every deck, which is fine. It is a very powerful and good card and does deserve a lot of reprints. But again, it's kind of one of those cards that I'm sick of seeing in decks. I've seen a lot of people or a handful of people online and with people I talk to always talk about that they usually take out Blasphemous Act when it comes to buying it, especially since the Fallout set where it was pretty much always been opened. Now on to artifacts. There is 14 in total, 10 of them the mana rocks, but you get good cards like a Seeker's Chariot, Bootlegger's Stash, Spine of Isha, and a Rolling Hamster Sphere. Rolling Hamster Sphere is one of those cards that is only in this deck, and I absolutely love it and think it's hilarious. Bootlegger Stash is, in my personal opinion, a really, really good artifact that is absolutely amazing, but people never use. 
I don't understand why. It's one of those things where people were like, I want lots of treasures, I want this deck to be able to have large amounts of mana, and then they're playing green and they're not putting this in, or they're not putting in Wilderness Reclamation as well, or Sea Bond Muse. Imagine you're playing a four player game, you have five lands, and then literally you end your turn, that person starts their turn, during the turn you're like, I'm a top five of my lands, I get five treasures, and then you do this again and again. You're on like your turn having 15 to 20 extra treasures, Never mind if you're having two or three of the cards that help you untap. Plus, there's a lot of green cards that help you untap lands as well. One is very pricey, though, it's like 100 quid. But I do find that it is an underrated card for a lot of people that want treasures. And then finally, onto the lands. In this deck, there is a total of 38 lands. And this is where I usually get disappointed. But let's see how it goes. You get lands just like Temple of Abandon, Game Trail, Copperline Gorge, Cinderglade, Rootbound Crag, Mosswort Bridge. A little bit better than I thought they would, however still not the greatest. I thought because of the 4-4 Elementals and the Wolf Commander that becomes a big massive beast, I thought there might be like something that helps more like that. I know there is a green red card that powers up your creature uh, and stuff like that. I thought that might have been in there. They do have your generic red green dual lands that are seen a lot uh, there is a little bit spoiler when it comes to the rest of the deck this is the only deck without a filter land which i did find weird uh, one of them has two or three in it as well i do think now with how magic is going on i do think filter lands should be in majority or all of the decks but that's just my personal opinion again if you think that differently let me know let's have a conversation about it but my thoughts overall i do think they did all right but kind of missed the, the kind of theme of it the way i like when it comes to commander decks is here's the commander here's the sub commander and here are cards that go well with it it feels really weird mainly because the cascade and the things becoming elementals is kind of too different but it seems they just went here is a commander with a cool idea here is a sub commander that's powerful and has somewhat of a cool idea and then here is just generic good roll stuff good green cards good red cards it doesn't seem to be kind of like hard focusing or a lot of cards that go well with them too it just seems to be here is the generic good cards that go well with them i think they would have been better if it was like if there was any cards that focused on like cascade or if there was any cards that weren't like i'm not sure if any exist but it's like elementals get plus one plus one or like anger would go good in here because of i know they get haste anyway but having anger to be able to play your other creatures and be able to attack with the elementals would be cool stuff like that would be absolutely awesome overall i think the deck is quite good i think it's just probably like just over what i think the deck needs to be i do really think it needs a filter land especially because the other ones do Overall, I do think this is probably maybe a 6.4, but again, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this deck. Let me know if you bought it or why you did or didn't in the comments down below. While you're there, remember to like, subscribe and follow and all that youtube -y stuff. And because this set is in Bloomborough, I did make a video talking about everything in Bloomborough when it comes to the set, the planeswalkers, the cards in it, the different arts and the different items you can buy. So if you're interested in that, there is a link right here a playlist where i talk about magic the gathering stuff about if is it worth it and stuff like that here and a subscribe button here and again all the support i've been really enjoying and i hope to grow with yous but as always i will see you all in the next video